Hello there, here's a paper 2 question regarding the potential meter. But first, we have to define or state Kirchhoff's second law. Okay, so this is the law that regards itself with conservation of energy. Um, I find it easier to think about the closed loop. And we are looking at the sum of EMF is equal to sum of IR or potential difference. So I will say something along the line where in a closed loop in your circuit, the sum of EMF is equal to the sum of potential difference across every component. Okay, so the, the keywords that we are looking for is number one, closed loop. Number two, sum of EMF is equal to the sum of PD. Right, and Kirchhoff's second law is related to the conservation of a certain quantity. As mentioned just now, this is the conservation of energy. All right, now we can move on. So you can see a very uh, typical potential meter circuit, right? You have cell A, 2 volt, but the only thing atypical here is this little 0 0.5 ohm here, okay? And we used to compare potential difference, sure. Okay, the second part of the circuit is actually outside, which is the wire. Okay, we know it has a length 1 meter. And it also mentions here that it has a resistance of 4 ohm. Okay, so I'm just going to write this at the side here. 1 meter, comma, 4 ohm. And also at the same time, you have this variable resistor R, which I believe can be used to change the precision of the instrument, okay? So basically what we're doing is we're just comparing whatever, we can connect whatever we want between these two points here, A and B, and we can compare the potential difference. And when we compare the potential difference, we can calculate it. That's what they mean by this. So to compare the potential differences across mainly is to measure across A, B. Okay. Anyway, um. The current through the cell is I, all right, so it's already labeled here. And cell B has an EMF E and a resistance R. Okay, sure. The current through cell B is made zero. Ah, we are still using the null method. Okay, null method. Meaning there's no current flowing through cell B, meaning there's no current, uh, no governometer or emitter reading. Okay, when the movable contact J is adjusted so that the length XJ is 0 0.9 meter. Variable resistor R has a resistance of 2.5 ohm. Okay, nice. We have adjusted, adjusted this to 2.5 ohm. All right. Apply Kirchhoff's second law to the circuit CXYD at DC to determine the current I. So let's see. Let's see. C x y d back to c so actually what we're talking about is this loop la. okay this loop is your c x y d c so if i want to do kirchhoff second law which is actually just a fancy way of saying v equal to i r but i can say sum of emf let's say here i will take sum of emf is equal to sum of potential difference okay or sum of vr you can write it however you want but there's only one emf one which is a two volt battery okay and you kind of have three components one is the wire two is the variable resistor and three is the internal resistance and because there is one and only one current just I here, the current didn't split huh? because remember, this uh, underneath this pass, no current will pass through. So the only current that is flowing through every body from the wire to the variable resistor through the cell is all I. It's the same current. So it's up to you. Lah. If you can tell that we can factorize it, that would be great. If not, this is also fine. You take the internal resistance plus the 2.5 ohm variable resistor. Let me move the page a bit. 
plus i across the wire, which is 4 ohm. So this one is actually i bracket 0 0.5 plus 2.5 plus 4. So from here, you can find your i, which is just a different way of saying that this is b equal to i r. My i now will be 0 0.286 ampere. Okay, let's put it. So let's, right now what we're doing is just Kirchhoff second law using this loop. Okay, which is basically what you've been doing all this while. V equal to IR. In this closed loop, the energy supplier is 2. The energy user is 0 0.5, 2.5, and 4. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Part 2. Calculate the potential difference across the length of the wire xj. So let's look at the circuit again. What I'm looking for is the potential difference across the length xj. So xj is essentially this 0 0.90 meter. La. Vxj. All right, let's use a bit of logic. I know Vxj can be calculated using I, the resistance from X to J. I already have I. I found it in the previous part. Okay. So what I actually just need is the resistance from X to J. So from X to J, the distance is 0 0.9 meter. So if 1 meter is 4 ohm, 0 0.90 meter, we are talking about the resistance Xj. So we can use ratio again, right? We have the current already. We're going to copy that value of I, 0 0.286 here. And to find the resistance of Xj, what we can do is we can use ratio. You know, it is 90 cm or 0 0.9 meter out of 1.00 meter. And then the total resistance is 4. So I'll just multiply by 4. So this is 3.6 lah, okay? So if I press my calculator, the value that I get here is 1.03 volt. I'm using 3SF just to increase 1SF lah. The precision is kind of important because you see 1 meter is 3SF. Okay, but you can write in 2SF, it's fine. Paper 2, they are not that strict. Okay, so we just use IR. I know the current flowing through the wire. I can obviously use the ratio to find the resistance of the wire because, you know, R is proportional to L. Okay, then I can multiply them to find V. Next. Part 3. Use your answer in part 2 to state the value of E and also state why the value of internal resistance of cell B is not required to find E. E is the EMF of cell B. Let's look at the circuit again. So this question wants you to find the value of E. But you know, if this if there's no current flowing through the cell, it means that the potential difference is equal. Or in other words, the potential drop from X to J will be the same as the potential drop across E. Teacher, we do this many times there. If you recognize that, good job. If not, maybe you need to review or do more questions or talk to me if you need to. Okay. So here to here, there's a drop of potential. And the drop of potential here to here and here to here is the same. So when we drop, it's 1.03 volt. So this E is also 1.03 volt. Because these two volt have to fight this battery. So it will drop 1.03. Same value. So E is 1.03 volt. Okay, if you want to explain, then I'll say the potential difference uh, at balance length or when there's no current, I'll just write balance length. The potential drop or the potential difference across PD across XJ will be equal to E. So hence, EMF is equal to 1.03. Second part of the question is asking us, why don't we need the value of this internal resistance R? Why don't we need to find this R? Well, my friends, we don't need to find the R because there's no current flowing. Right? There's no current flowing in this loop at all. No current flow. If there's no current flow, is there any lost volts? No. Because there's no conversion of energy 
there's no lost votes. Okay, there's no lost votes. The battery doesn't get hot. So what I'll probably just briefly mention here is that the <clears throat> since there's no current through cell B. Hence, the, there's no lost votes. Let me move the screen a bit. No current through cell B. No lost votes. Okay. So this is why we can actually take the reading directly. No lost votes. No lost votes. So the terminal potential which is what you're measuring right now, because you're connecting AB directly across the terminals of the battery. Okay, so terminal potential is straight away equal to EMF. E. EMF of cell B. All right. Okay, so sometimes if they ask you a circuit question, Normally, if it's MCQ, you have to do a lot of work to answer that one question because it's really testing your understanding. But as usual, if it's a structural question, if you really understand it, then you get more marks for showing your understanding. Okay. So in a nutshell, what we're doing here is we have a two volt battery and the potential difference is shared across wire, resistor, and internal resistance. But as long as we can achieve balance length, the first thing we did was to find the current. Okay. Once we find the current, we know that the potential difference across xj is 1.03 because we use V equal to IR here. Okay. The current that we found, then we use ratio for 90 cm or 0 0.9 meter. And because the length is balanced, the potential difference across xj must be equal to E. This is the very foundation, very important foundation of the working principle of a potential meter. Whenever this thing using the null method, meaning here to here, null is zero. So zero current flow, the potential must be the same. So E, the drop through cell, through cell B, which is E, will be the same as the drop across the wire. Why is there a drop in cell B? Because cell A and cell B are fighting. Cell A wants the current to flow from A to B. Cell B is like, bro, I want the current to flow from B to A. So they fight. But cell A is winning. That's why the current is zero. Okay. And finally, why is it that we don't need the value of R? Because there's no current. So there's no lost votes. What we are measuring right now is the terminal potential. When do we need to know R? Good question. When current flows. Okay, so if current flows, the circuit could look like this, where I connect another resistor across the battery. But you can see the entire potential meter, right? As just legit, just measuring the potential difference across A to B. At balance length, VAB is equal to VXJ. So you adjust the jockey, no? Okay, where is the current flowing? Of course, the current will still flow this way. This one is goes without saying. There's current flowing like this. Okay, I'm just going to draw a few arrows here to represent I. Okay, there's another current flowing here. This one, no problem. Now, now we need to know the internal resistance of this battery. Or now some further calculation is needed. As I call this I2, there's another current in this closed loop. The only loop that has no current is here. You shall not pass. You shall not pass. So that means cell A is on its own loop and it's not going to interfere with cell B. Cell B is on its own loop and it's not going to interfere with cell A. Cool. Then cap. Okay. But if let's say it is not balanced, for example, uh, the potential is bigger, then cell A will say, nah, I'll move this way, bullying cell E. Or if let's say for whatever reason, maybe this R is too big, then the potential across the wire becomes too small and cell B wins, then cell B will be like, yes, my turn. So it's either cell B gets its way, the current flow in this direction, or cell A gets its way, the current flow in this direction. Don't know need to calculate. But because they are fighting at balance length, 
the potential difference across the potential drop across cell A will be the potential drop across cell across X and J. And in this case, since current is flowing, since I2 is flowing in battery, in cell B, there is loss volts. Then you have to use uh, your EMF equation or your Kirchhoff second law for this pink color loop. All right, that's just extra an extension. You know, if Miss Lee said question, maybe she'll add another resistor there, keeping this cell B company because the cell B is very lonely. Are you lonely? Find some friend and do some past year questions together. Practice, level up physics together. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.